Hi, I'm Adam Summer. You're listening to the Yershami Talk podcast with the support of the Yeshivat Javar Yishalayim in Harnov, Jerusalem. This is Peah, Chapter 6, Ha 5. And finally, we're going to get into, hey, how big does a sheaf have to be? What is too big to count as a sheaf? So the Mishnah teaches that there is a limit to the size of a single sheaf beyond which it could not be rendered shikicha. Finally, we're going to get to this thing of how, you know, is there a maximum limit to it? And indeed there is. The Mishnah reads, if a sheaf contains two seya and the farmer forgot it, it is not shikicha. So let's get into the uh, into this. Now, if you look in Derech Amunah, chapter 5, Halakha 14, and if you also look in the Rambam's commentary at the end of this Mishnah, you're going to see that this mention of two seya of grain is to be read literally as two seya of grain. In other words, the stalks and the straw do not count for this measure. You are only to measure it by the actual grain, not the rest of the plant. That's a key part. Okay, So if the sheaves contain Tuseya and the farmer forgot it, it is not Shikha. Don't forget, there's a magical thing with um, Tuseya. It comes up a lot in the shafts. So if one forgot two sheaves that in combination with each other contain two seya, Rabban Gamliel says they belong to the owner, but the sages say they belong to the poor. Rabban Gamliel, his point is that although neither sheaf is entitled to its own, um, you know, to its own on the two seya exemption, since the two forgotten sheaves together contain a total of two, they do not combine uh, to become shikha. The sages say that it does combine. Okay, so let me read it again. <clears throat> if one forgot two sheaves that in combination with each other contains two seya, uh, Rabban Gamliel says they belong to the owner. The sages say it belongs to the poor. So it's a question of whether they combine or not. According to the sages, they do combine, they belong to the poor. Rabban Gamliel is... Um, is alluding to this law stated in the last Mishnah that two forgotten sheaves are shikha, but three are not. And it's going to talk about a, uh, a question to the sages. So, Rabban Gamliel said to the sages, from an abundance of sheaves, is the owner's strength enhanced or is the owner's strength diminished? In other words, if you have lots and lots and lots of forgotten sheaves, um, does it increase the owner's right, or is it going to decrease it? How should we be looking at forgotten sheaves from the perspective of, hey, does this fall over to the, to the property of the poor, or do we favor the owner of it? How are we supposed to look at interpreting the law? And the sages said to him, his strength is enhanced. In other words, since a set of three or more forgotten sheaves is not shikaka, it is evident that the increase of forgotten sheaves increases the owner's rights. And Rabban Gamliel said to the sages, since you agree that the multiplicity of forgotten sheaves reduces their susceptibil susceptibility to becoming shikha, the following argument can be made. Mishnah reads, if when there is only one sheaf and it contains two seya, and he forgot it, uh, it is not shikha. When there are two sheaves and they together contain two seya, should it not follow that they are shikha? And the sages said to him, no, it's not a valid argument. Again, he's trying to come back and trying to say, okay, well, by your own logic, shouldn't these two combine to to make that exclusion? Because you're supposed to favor the, you know, the inherent thing is supposed to favor the rich and the owner of the land. And since these two things, uh, if they combined, would favor the owner, then therefore it should be allowed to be combined and be exempted. So that's 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 the point. Okay. So sages say to him, no, that's not a valid argument. And the mission reads, for they say a two exemption for one sheaf, which is like a stack. 
and you say so for two sheaves, which are like bundles. So uh, let's look at the Mara Fulda here for some help. The sages are responding that the reason a Tusea sheep is exempt from Shkika is that the Torah states, with respect to the Shkika obligation in Devarim 2419, and you, sh and you forgot a sheep in the field. This implies that Shkika pertains only to a forgotten sheep, but not to a forgotten stack. And Tusea sheep is going to be classified as a stack due to its big size. And, you know, regarding, you know, the case, you know, you know, if each of the two forgotten sheaves contain less than two seya, uh, you know, it can only be viewed as an independent bundle that must be assessed on its own terms with its own properties. In other words, saying that since neither sheaf on its own contains enough to be regarded as a stack, in other words, two seya, they are both eligible to be rendered shrikha they do not combine because you have to look at them as an individual unit and the intrinsic property as an individual unit is that it's less than to say. And that's why the sages say that, you know, it's not a valid argument. So the mission is now going to talk about the application of this to say a limit with regards to shikha of standing grain. What about that? So the missioner reads, if Standing grain contains two say, and the farmer forgot to reap it. It is not shkikha. Okay, so the Gemara is gonna is going to give a scriptural basis of this, and um, for equating shkikha to standing grain to the shkikha of sheaves in this respect as well. And the Mishnah finishes up and says, if the forgotten standing grain does not contain two say, but it is capable of producing producing Tusea, even if it is currently as meager as a crop of grass pea, we view it as if it were laden with normal size barley kernels. So let's unpack what this means. So a grass pea is a type of bean, says the Rosh, and the seeds are very thin. That's the comment by the Rosh. And uh, the Rosh also says that the Mishnah is referring to a barley crop that was beaten by destructive winds, which stunted the growth of its kernels. And in the case of such a consideration, the forgotten stalks do not actually contain two say of grain, but would be capable of yielding this amount if they had not been damaged. And um, the Rosh is continuing to point out that although the damaging winds caused the barley kernels to shrivel so that they did not attain their normal size and they're as small as grass peas, we assess how large the stunted kernels would have been if they developed normally. And if when we evaluate in this manner, they amount to two say of grain, the forgotten sheaves are not shikha. So basically uh, what this is saying that, hey, if these are damaged by uh, natural forces and they're they're abnormally small. Uh, if you didn't have the the abnormal forces occurring, then you would count it like the two shikicha limit if they were really going to grow at a normal natural level and end up that way. So they would have ended up that way. They just got damaged. So you're supposed to look at it in terms of it um, like if they were to develop normally and naturally. I want to point out something from the Vilna Gon. Uh, Vilna Gon is going to comment on this in the Tsefeta 312, where there's a parallel on it, uh, in his um, safe number 12 on the uh, Hagano Sagra on it. He's saying that this allowance of basing the two say a measurement on the potential yield rather than the actual yield applies only to the assessment of forgotten standing crop. It does not extend to assessing the content of a forgotten sheaf, and this is because the standing grain can, can continue to grow so that its potential size is a factor to be considered. But when assessing the two say a content of a forgotten sheaf, which is detached and no longer grows, no such allowance is made. So that's, a, that's an important uh, way to, to look at it. So let's, let's take a look and... Take a look at the Gemara. Rabbi Lazar said, It is written, when you reap your harvest in your field and you forgot a sheep in the field, 
you shall not return to take it. So the Torah refers here, it says the Gemara, to a sheaf that you can stretch out your hand and take all at once, to the exclusion of a sheaf that you cannot stretch out your hand and take all at once. So basically one that contains two say or more, which the rabbis are assessing as being too much for a single person to lift and carry at one time. Um, I want to point out this measurement of, of two say, how big is this? We're talking about something that ends up to be pretty big. Uh, if you look in, in the Derech Amunah, chapter 5 in, in uh, Halakha 114, Derech Amunah, it's it's gonna measure, it's actually gonna it's gonna break down the calculation. Here's here's how calculation breaks down. You have two seya is representing the measure of a volume of uh, a bulk of 288 eggs. Um, and the Rosh Cirillo is gonna point out that uh, this volume of two seya, uh, if you look in in your Shalmi Trumos chapter ten halacha five. It corresponds to a weight of 9,600 zuz. 9,600 zuz uh, for two seya. This, this is stated in the Mishnah in, in Trumo. So that's how we know it's 9,600 zuz. And uh, if, you, if you look in, um, in other commentary, uh, they break down how much does 9,600 zuz weighs. And it comes out to 90 pounds, just about 90 pounds. So this this Tuseya uh, thing that we're talking about is only the grain, okay? It's not the stalks. It's not the other parts of the plant, not the leaves. It's only the grain. And this exemption is where just the grain part of a stack is going gonna, is gonna to be equivalent in weight to about 90 pounds. It's, it's sizable. This is pretty big. Okay, you could look at it as one of these like intermediary stacks that they're putting together, where it's all being combined together. Um, this and into a single very very large stack, and so yeah, ninety pounds, and and if you're, you know, or more, and and if that gets forgotten, that still belongs to the owner. So that's it. So that's the upper limit. That's what we're talking about. So that's why uh, Rabbi Lazar is pointing out, hey, when you reap your harvest of in your field and you forgot a sheaf, you shall not return to take it. So they're reading the Torah literally here, and they're saying the Torah is referring to a sheaf that you could stretch out your hand to take. So, you know, basically Rabbi Lazar's point is that you can't pick up a 90-pound sheaf with your hand to take it. You can't just pick that up, even if you're a very strong guy. You can't you can't just pick up a 90 and by the way, this is still attached to the uh, to the straw, the hay, and the other things. We're only talking about 90 pounds of the grain, not the other stuff. So you can't reach out your hand and take it. And so it's talking about a smaller sheaf that you could reach out your hand and take. This is when you're, you know, bending down and you're cutting and you you grab a couple of handfuls and you tie it up. That's what we're talking about. That's easy to carry away. Something this massive, very hard to to walk away. There's an alternative source on this in a brisa on how they're going to be thinking about forgetting a sheaf. Gemara reads, there are some teachers of brises who teach when the verse states, and you forget a sheaf, it indicates that shikika applies only when you forgot a sheaf, but not when you forget a stack. And a two say a sheaf, by virtue of its sheer size, is classified as a stack. So the Rosh, the Rosh, sorry, notes that uh, you know the sages reply to Gam, Rabban Gamliel in the Mishnah. It's evident that they subscribe to this derivation in this Baraisa, right? So they're they're deriving it. The 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 people in the Mishnah are looking at this Baraisa to come up with this understanding, this alternate source. They're saying that we read it again that the Brisa teaches uh, when this verse states, and you forgot a sheaf, it indicates that the sheikh applies only when you forgot a sheaf, but not when you forgot a stack. And to say a, uh, and, you know, a to say a sheaf by virtue of the, of the size is really going to be a stack. 
So that's that's how they're understanding it. Again, 90 pounds of grain, even if it's attached to all the straw, it's going to weigh way more. So that's a very big size. Gamara is going to ask a question. It says, what practical difference does it make when a two say a sheep is exempt from shikika because it cannot be lifted by a single person all at once or because it is classified as a stack? What's the difference? And the Gemara is going to give an answer that relates to this dispute between Bet Hillel and Bet Shammai and, you know, regarding a forgotten sheep that was situated near a prominent item like, you know, a grain stack. That came up in the case of the Mishnah in chapter 6, Halakha 2. So what what's going to be the way we look at it? So Gemara reads, one difference is in a case where the farmer forgot a single ordinary sheaf that was located next to a two-sayer sheaf. And if you classify, says the Gemara, the two-sayer sheaf as a sheaf and say that it is that its general exempt, exemption from shikha is only because it cannot be lifted, as Rabbi Lazar points out, then according to all, says Gemara, both Bet Shemai and Bet Hillel, that's basically what it says when according to all, the ordinary sheaf that was forgotten at its side is subject to shikicha because it is not next to a stack. That's what the Gemara reads. Gemara continues, says, if, however, you classify the two, say, a sheaf as a stack in accordance with the way this Bryce is explaining it, then the disposition of this forgotten sheaf, uh, which now has a status of a sheaf near a stack is going to be based on this, says Gemara, dispute between Bet Shemai and Bet Hillel in the Mishnah in Halakha 2, in chapter 6, Halakha 2. Now, keep in mind over there that Bet Shemai says, you know, this sheaf, and like any sheaf that stands next to a stack of grain, it's going to be exempt from Shikha. And according to Bet Hillel, they're going to say that there is no such exemption and that the sheaf is therefore subject to shikha since it is situated next to a stack. So the Gemara is going to present an additional difference between the two derivations. Another difference uh, will be the case where Gemara says, the farmer forgot two ordinary sheaves next to a two seya sheaf. If you classify the two seya sheaf as a sheaf, then the two adjacent sheaves can combine with it to form a row of three making the status of the two smaller sheaves contingent upon the dispute between Bet Shemai and Bet Hillel in the last Mishnah as to whether a row of three sheaves is going to be exempt from Shikika. Gemara continues, says, if, however, we classify the two say a sheaf as a stack, then this group of sheaves is not judged as a row of three, even according to Bet Hillel, since we do not have a row of three sheaves, but rather two sheaves and a stack. So how do we how do we understand this? Let's take a look at uh, the Burim by Rabbi Moshe Feinstein in Safe 132. And basically, Yashami on this point is going to be maintaining that the reason the two say a sheaf is exempt from Shikha is that it is classified as a stack but at the same time, it has the status of a sheaf in that it can combine with two adjacent sheaves to create a shikha exempt row. That's the point by Rabbi Moshe Feinstein on how he's reading this and understanding it. And, um, you know, there, there's a practical difference um, between classifying, you know, a, a two say a sheaf as a sheaf rather than a stack. Okay, and that can be illustrated, you know, with this context of, you know, Bet Shemai's view also in the case that, you know, one forgot three ordinary sheaves next to a two Shea, Shea sheaf. And, you know, if the if the last one, this two Shea sheaf, is classified as a sheaf, Bet Shemai is going to hold that the first three combined with it to form a four sheaf row and exempt it from Shechicha. And if you're going to hold that this very, very big uh, um, stack is a stack rather than a sheaf, then if you put it next to it, it's not going to combine. 
So you get this 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 uh, big thing of hey, uh, if if you're going to count it like a sheaf, then it then it um, combines like with what Bet Shemai says. But if you're going to count it as a stack, then it does not combine like what Hillel says, and it deter that really does determine whether whether it's going to um, have everything become subject to Shivu or not. Now, there's two things going on so far in the Mishnah. Mishnah has been talking about what about the status of this 90-pound stack or sheaf of a uh, pile of grain of uh, uh, you know cut um, you know wheat that's piled up like this that's connected you know so is it a sheaf or is it a stack? And we know that this is going to be exempt because a single person is not able to to carry it all. Okay, you can't. It's 90 pounds of just the grain, not including the straw and the stalks and the leaves. This is massive size. Okay, so we know that that stack or sheaf, however you want to call it, okay, that itself is not going to be. That's that to say a limit. But now the point of what we're talking about here is going to be that if you're going to classify it as a sheaf, then it's going to go like um, bet Shemai. And it's gonna it's gonna combine with the other ones. And if you're gonna count this giant thing as a um, as not a sheaf, but but as a stack, then it's gonna you know according to Bet Hillel, it's not gonna combine. So basically, the second point is that is this thing gonna combine to save smaller ones that are next to it? That's really the question. Okay. So the mission is gonna state, um, you know. You know, if standing grain contains two seah and you forgot to reap it, it is not shihuga. And the Gemara now is going to provide a scriptural source for extending the two seah exemption to forgotten standing grain. By the way, um, since we go by Bet Hillel, so it must be that really this this two seah uh, sheaf is not really a sheaf. You should regard it as a stack. And that it's not going to combine with the others to save uh, ones that are next to it from becoming shkikuka. Um, um, in other words, that that um, that you, if you have you know if you have two smaller sheaves you know that are that are are next to it, uh, and you're you're judging it as a stack, um, then you know the group of sheaves is not going to be judged as a row. Um, so it's not going to be a row of uh, three. It's just going to be a, a row of two. It'll be the way to look at it is, you know, a uh, you know a row of two sheaves and a stack. And Bet Shemai would be looking at it as as um, you know basically three sheaves that are together. Okay. So so that's a that's a key difference. Um, Rabbi Yona said. For the verse states, when you reap your harvest in your field and you forgot a sheaf in the field. So you have this double mention of field here. This is in Devarim 2419. And in this verse, the expression in the field refers to the forgetting of the standing grain. And you have this extra in the field. And that is coming to teach in the Torah. The law is the same also um, for the sheaf. In other words, the verse reads like this, says, when you reap your harvest in your field, okay, there's a vav there, in your field, so that's going to come to talk about standing grain, says Rabbi Yonah, and vav, you forgot a sheaf in the field. Okay, so now that's coming to teach the law of the sheaf. It's in the same pasuk, and it has a vav separating the two, and it should be read as, as just like over here, the law over here is the same as law over there. That's how you're getting that, that, that we know that the law is applying to the um, standing grain for, for forgotten sheaves. It's going to be the same as the sheaves. And it's Doraita, and it's here, and it's not made up by the rabbis, and you can open up the Torah, and you can look for yourself. Gemara continues, says, just as when there is a sheaf that contains two say and one forgets it, it is not rendered shkikacha. Gemara says, so too, if there is standing grain and contains Two seya and one forgets it. It is not rendered shrikha. So basically, the you know analogy between shrikha of standing grain 
and Shkiyot of the Sheaves is is presented. And uh, just like over here, we know what the halacha is for uh, the sheaves, then we should be able to, to apply it equally to the standing grain. And the final segment of the Mishnah is saying that if one forgot uh, standing grain and it does not contain tuseya but is capable of producing tuseya, so, you know, this, this windblown uh, barley is what it's basically talking about, according to the Rosh. So Gemara reads, even if it is currently as meager as a crop of grass pea, we view it as it was laden with normal, as if it were, you know, you know, normal size, you know, barley kernels, okay? And the Gemara is going to qualify the Mishnah's ruling. Rabbi Yosef says, but this is true only when the forgotten stalks have already developed ears of grain. Then the Mishnah rules that even if ears are short, we view them as if they were long, and even if they were wind-beaten, we view them as if they were full. In other words, if the forgotten stalks have not yet developed ears of grain, we do not concern ourselves with how much grain they could eventually produce, and they are subject to shkikaka regardless of the quantity. That's really the point. Mara Fulda points out on Rabbi Yosef's comment that with regards to stalks that we've already that have already developed ears of grain, but are undeveloped or damaged, we assess their grain content on the basis of how much they could potentially produce if they were mature and healthy. And if this amount is to say or more, the stalks exempt them from shkika, even if the actual content is less than to say it. And by the way, we know that because that, you know, the law on shkika is going to favor as we know from this Mishnah, is going to be favoring the owner. And that's why you have this halacha like that, that we're going to be looking at this windblown thing and counting up this windblown crop and, and saying, okay, it's going to favor the owner on this. If it, if it actually could one day in potential have grown to say or more. According to Vilna Gon, Rabbi Yosef's point is that we do not view a sparsely grown area as though it possesses a, a consistently dense concentration of stalks. Only the actual stalks that were forgotten are taken into consideration and viewed as if they were fully developed, fully developed and healthy. And that's the view in his Shainus Eliyahu. And there's also a note on this reflecting the same. In you know, in a, in a note by the Chaim, Rabbi Chaim of Volosian, um, and and also uh, in Derech Amuna, you can see the same uh, thing where you know that this be, you know that they're you know cutting it for you know food for you know fodder for the animals, um, and you can see that in Derech Amuna, chapter five, halacha one nineteen. Thank you so much.